everybody. My name's Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. I am filming this um, of Labor Day weekend, and by the time it posts, my vacation will be over. Um, so sometimes I don't like to think about that. But I have pre-recorded several things and um, pre-scheduled things to post and to email to you. So if you have um, asked me a question on my website or my blog or Facebook, YouTube, and I haven't gotten back to you right away, it's because um, we're at the Magic Kingdom. By the time this posts, I think this will be the one that posts the day that we come home. So vacation will be over. Hopefully I had a great time, but I do want to remind you that through September 12th, I have extra um, specials. So you'll want to check out either my Facebook page or your email or my website, and then you can find out my vacation specials because they'll be ending today because this is the last day that you can get them. Then if you um, don't have a copy of either of these catalogs, if you're new to stamping, I would love to send you one. As long as you're in the U.S., you can just message me. I haven't said that throughout the week because I didn't want people to message me that were new and think I was ignoring them. Um, but this catalog's only good through the end of September. So I'm only going to be sending it out for like a week more. And then after that, you can still get this one, um, but I'm not going to send any more of these out. Then the stamp set that I am using today is out of this mini catalog. And then I'm going to tie a couple of things from our annual catalog in. So if you need the big one, if you don't have that one for this year, I'd be happy to send you that too. Then I do have my online class for the Classic Cloche is open for registration right now. And then by the time this video goes up, it will. I may have it up depending on how, um, I, how much I get done before vacation. But right after it, for sure, it will be up registration for my fall retreat. So those are the two things, those are the only two things you can register for this month. So um, I hope you do both. They're both gonna be really good. These are all things that you can make with the Classic Cloche and Sweet Treats bun, um, dies and stamps if you have them. Um, and you can already go get started on those and then get ready for the online class where we'll do four additional projects. So for this one, this is a fun one. I asked a few days ago for people to tell me from my stack of stamps that I had hoped to get all the way through. There's still a couple I didn't get to um, from the holiday catalog that I had not inked up yet. And this was one of the most popular choices. So it's the Peaceful Deer. And what I love about it is that you don't need a cut and boss machine. So I know most of us have them, most of us love them. And most of the time I can't imagine doing a card without them, without it. But sometimes, especially this time of year, you may be going away for fall break or uh, you know visiting family and you wanna take stamping supplies, but you don't need to um, drag along your machine. Or maybe you're new to stamping and you don't wanna put that investment in it, which I totally get. They didn't even exist when I started stamping. Um, so it wasn't anything we had to get right away because hey, they weren't available to purchase. So when you have a punch set, you're gonna have everything you need in these. So we have the penguins, and we, which are on back order. This one is not, um, and it works really well. And so then I pulled in another punch. This is from the annual catalog. And then actually, um, I'm pulling in paper from the annual catalog as well. So don't forget that there is Christmas stuff over there. And both of these punches could be used year round for masculine, nature, scrapbooking, all kinds of things. So let's get going on it. I do want to point out that I am using this deer and this deer. There's two deers that work with the punch and then our celebration paper, which is only available till the end of September, free with purchase. There, There is a designer series paper that goes with this set but if you don't get it by the end of december i mean september then don't think you're going to get this in november to start christmas cards and find out that the paper doesn't exist i'm not using that paper but i will get i'm going to have a celebration week when i get back from vacation so you'll see a lot more of the celebration items but so there's these two that work with a punch and then i am using this deer and this rabbit but i'm not using this deer so there's still another deer there are also antlers and then there are four sets of trees. Again, you can use these all year round. Um, I'm only using two of the sets of trees. So I wanted you to see how much is in this set because I'm not even using half of it. So let's get going on the card because I have to start packing. My husband's already come up twice because he's it's he's home and asking, when, were you, when are we doing lunch? And I told him 30 minutes, about 45 minutes ago. And I still have to film this and one more card. So I need to get cracking. So I have cherry cobbler for my base. And then the background paper that we're gonna use is from the annual catalog and it's called Tidings of Christmas. 
So maybe you did that class earlier this year and then you'd have a bunch of this paper. It's also been one of the gifts that I have been sending um, for prizes that we do on my um, team page if you're one of my team members. And then I have some shimmer white cardstock and then I have the shimmery vellum and then this is the elegant evergreen. So let's decide exactly which way I wanna do this. So for this, for the background of this project, we are going to build a scene. So when you build a scene, there's a few ways to do it. One, you wanna start with your, any color, images that are gonna be colored in because you don't wanna stamp some of the background over them or run out of room. So start with your largest images. So we have this little D here. I'm gonna use Memento, put her down in the corner. And this, I started out, I had to actually make this again because I started out with this just smaller than a quarter sheet of cardstock. And then you couldn't see my, um, beautiful paper behind. So then I cut it down and it was too small with the way I'd stamped it. Then there are some little pieces of ground. So get those in there. And then again, we need to get our bunny because we don't want her to have green stamped on her when we go to stamp our trees. Stamp her here. And then there is also some little bits of dirt. Where did I put them? Right here which I love when they give us these pieces because I do not like to have my images floating around in air. It bothers me. So now we have a little bit of that there. I'm going on this one, I'm going to go ahead and add some more. One, another one of these, and then I'm going to flip it the other direction so it doesn't look like I just put the same thing. This is not on my other card. And when I was done, I thought, oh, you should have added some lines up here but it was all stuck together, so that was too late. So now we've got that. Now I'm going to switch to working with, oh, I do need to stamp this one that we're gonna punch out before I put my black up. I'm trying to do this fast so my husband doesn't come in and ask what's going on. So now we've got that and we're gonna punch that one out, and that's all the black that we need. Now to put the saying on, I'm gonna grab Cherry Cobbler, because that's the background color that I chose because it looks really pretty against the screen and really festive. So I have pulled two of the sentiments out and I really like the font on this. So we've got Merry Christmas. I'm going to try to not put my head over the top. And then we have, um, it's the best time of year. I'm going to stick this just underneath it. Now we've got that. Now I'm gonna get my evergreen. And now I can pull in my trees because now I know where I can't stamp because I've got stuff that's in the way. So let's do this one here. This is the biggest tree we're gonna use. Keep it just up inside my snow line there. And then I have this other set of trees. Now I told you there's four sets and you could have, you can use all four sizes if you would like. Um, I would like to be done so I can start stamping. So two works just as well. I'm gonna keep stamping these off to kind of give us the feel that the forest goes on. And then I'm gonna put one more dark one here in the middle, but I don't want it to go on my words. So my other one, it worked the way I did it, that I had some light on there. Here, we can get one more light up there. So stamp it until it's almost gone. And then we'll have a little bit go up into the words. Okay, now I'm gonna color these and I chose blends. The first time I did it, I used a blender pen and um, stamp pads, but it left me not a great way to color my rabbit. So with this, you wanna make sure that you stay away from the edges. And this is light smoky slate. So I'm just adding a little bit, hints of smoky slate to his insides because this is gonna bleed. If it bleeds a little bit on the rabbit and the deer, it just kind of makes them look like they are fuzzy. So it's not the end of the world, but you don't want a whole lot of bleeding going on. So you wanna keep it inside the line. So I'm not, I'm still not coloring right to the edge. 
And then this is our color lifter and it will just kind of give him some splotchies. So got that. And then let's do our deers. So for them, I pulled out, I didn't want them to look exactly the same. I didn't use any dark cinnamon cider. So I started with the light cinnamon cider. And again, don't go right up to the edge because it's just a smaller design and it will bleed. Plus it, I have my windows open and it's a little muggy here. So if it's muggy where you are, the bleeding is more of an issue. In the winter, when I have my um, heater and furnace going, then the bleeding's not as big as an issue as it is right now. So just put this on. Again, I'm making sure I leave their tails white so they have little white fluffy tails. Now I'm gonna go to dark crumb cake. Just add a little bit of highlights. I'm not gonna do everywhere I did this cinnamon cider. And again, I am not going to go to the edges. Do the same thing over here. And then I have our ivory marker, which has a tinge, well, it's flesh color. It's not my flesh color right now because it's summer. Um, so it's got a tinge of brownish, pink to it, which works well for our deers. Now with this, I'm gonna use it to blend. And again, trying to not go right up to the edge, I'll let it bleed to the edge. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Because it'll start kind of spreading out there. It's mainly her, their little legs and then up by their little ears that can really bleed out. We got that. Go over here. And the more color you put on something, the more ink there is, then the paper gets wet and kind of saturates out. That's why I'm kind of going back and forth between the two. It'll still blend, but it gives that time, a little bit of time to dry before you hit it up with another color. So then I'm gonna go back. I want the overall color to feel cinnamon cider. So now that I've got those blended, I'm just gonna add a couple more hits of cinnamon cider where I already have cinnamon cider. So we're not really adding another color. We're just kind of strengthening that cinnamon cider back up. And I'm going to take my color lifter again, and then this, I won't have to add another color, but I'll be able to blend this in. And the nice thing is, is these are more realistic looking deers. And so deer have, you know, they're not one stark, just plain color. That was why I went with three different colors and didn't go all cinnamon cider, even though that was the color I wanted my deer to be. So there, that's all the coloring that we need. So now let's do the punching. So we have the deer, and it will also punch the antlers out if you stamped those. So just line that up, punch that out. I can also use the antlers, you can see them. They can be, if you have any of the C, like the fish sets, it can be coral or it can be, you can add flowers in it. It can be a branch. You can put a little bird, if you have a little bird stamp and it can be a, a branch that way. So when you use your punches, often think of multiple ways that you can use them. Now I'm gonna take my shimmer, shimmery cardstock vellum, and I'm gonna slide it in here. Now, most of our punches you use upside down. Don't use this one upside down. It's not nearly as easy. So just put this where you can see the paper coming out here. Punch that, then roll this along. Now it no longer touches the bottom on this side because you've punched out part of the bottom, but you line these trees up. And then we'll punch another one and then we slide these over. When you hold this in the air, it's harder to line these up because backwards you don't see the guide. And the vellum has a tendency because you push a little harder to stick in, the trees kind of get stuck in there. So if you're having a tr problem with your trees getting stuck in when you use this, then try doing it on the table. So now we have all these trees that we can work with. 
And you can see if you do it that way, you end up with whole trees on either side, but we don't want a little square piece right here. Like I don't want it to look like it is square. So I just take my scissors and kind of go like that. That way it's not a straight drop off. Now we're gonna go ahead and stick this on here because we're gonna overlap our trees off the piece of this because you'll still be able to see the beautiful paper. We're not gonna cover it up that way. Oh, my laundry's going off. There's just too many things. To go on vacation after a holiday weekend when you wanted to do some fun things on your holiday weekend is kind of worse than doing it from being at work because we enjoyed the holiday and there were lots of times the weekend with our daughter and her boyfriend and there were times that I kept thinking I should be doing this but I really wanted to just enjoy time with family so I knew today would be a nightmare. So you can see I've just cut this piece off and then I'm going to just add some adhesive and you need it on maybe three of the trees. You don't most certainly don't need it on all of them. So go for three of the biggest ones because that's easier to hit with the adhesive. And again, you don't want them on top of your animal's heads. Oops, I wanted to go off one way, so let's go this way. And you can see, now you can see through that and it's a fun little accent. These trees are gonna be different than the other ones just because when you stamp backgrounds like this, sometimes they're all a little bit different. Now I'm gonna take my dimensionals and I have the tiny ones. that to the backs of two of these trees. So these are a little bit more raised up. And we'll put this over here, which is not where they are on my other card, but that's okay. You just want to stagger them. So again, it's building that forest and we haven't used any die cutting stuff. It's all just punches. And then I'm going to take my deer and I want her to be higher than these trees. So I'm going to double layer my dimensional. So put one on, pull those off. Make sure you pull those off because if you do this and you leave that stuff in between, they're just going to eventually slip off because they don't stick to this um, backing coating. Pull these off. Now this is twice as high. This one's a little low. as the trees. So you can put it over the top of the trees and it's not gonna smash them down. And for a Christmas card, it's really a fun and effective way to get a little bit of extra in there. And this card doesn't have any ribbon. So this is the only thing that the post office might balk at, but I don't think it would take any extra postage because it, when you put the dimensionals in the envelope, they don't feel like they're hard. So add this and then no ribbon which is odd for me. I have ribbon on almost every card, but I'm going to use the holiday rhinestones. So I'm going to get the colors. You can see there's the blue, which is in the paper, so you can use that. And then there's the green and the cherry and then a, a fun gold. So I want the gold to kind of look like maybe the moon. And then I'm gonna pick two of the little, the smaller sizes and just kind of cap some of my trees. Let's pick that one there. And you get a cherry cobbler one. I'm going to put it on one of the ones that's up in the air on this one. Again, total different placing placement than my first one. So super fun, great texture, not at all hard to do. I mean, I colored, cut, punched in all of that, and it doesn't take very long. Here's my other one. And you can see the trees are just placed differently, and it just depended on where you kind of hit your saying and where your tall trees are. But in the end, they all look very similar. So both of these bundles, the trees do come with a set stamp set as well. So you can get that as a bundle and you can get the bundle with the deer. So make sure that if you want the matching coordinating paper that goes with the deer bundle, that you purchase it before the end of September. So you get it for free. Otherwise you can't get it at all. So that's what I have. And I will look forward to seeing you back in the studio when I'm home. Bye.